Hi, my name is Rias Nazari. I live in Stuttgart, which is close to the Black Forest and the place where I like to take some time off for hiking. I love to work with wood as a Saturday mechanic and on Sundays I love to spend my time with old RPGs from the 90s where you can um, configure a long sequence of wizard spells. Talking about configure, um, I simply love the degree which is giving to coding, especially to Python, which I discovered the last 15 weeks at the WBS coding school. Pandas Python for sure, um, API web scrubbing, and all machine learning related topics were here most interesting for me. Before that, I worked as a design engineer the last 10 years in the automotive branch after my graduation as a Master of Science in Industrial Engineering. All right, that's it for me. Let's move on. I'd like to talk about what possible solutions Python can give us when it comes up to your money. What do your typical expenses look like? Of course, we pay for food and shelter in daily life. And some of you might also spend a constant amount on savings. There is a rule of uh, thumb to split your income by 50, 30, 20, which means 50% for essentials, 30% for lifestyle, and 20% for savings. Now, you might ask yourself, okay, what does it have to do with Python? Well, I'll tell you what. Python can be very helpful in, in understanding what went in, what out, especially for on what I spend money most. To understand this, a dashboard is just the right tool. Another target was to identify savings when it's time to quit, let's say, a subscription. And as last target, we ran some predictions about future cash flows. So how did we tackle these targets? We started with using made up transactions and categorized them. Then we filtered out irregularities since we wanted to understand what are our normal and recurrent transactions. So first we filtered out the one timer as you all know them like refunds or for wrong parking. And in the second step, we looked at basic um, statistical graphs, such as uh, the box plot of your expenses, which can be pretty dispersed. And at the third iteration, we checked if a transaction lays within its own category range to make sure we don't have too many outliers there. Among our investigation, I came along with a lot of useful tools, such as defining key variables inside a chat box, when you grab foreign data by web scrubbing, you can get them through a translator. You can actually extract information from a PDF if your bank has nothing better to offer. And I installed a pop-up window to provide important hints to the user. And I also found a way to save your printed text and graphics, all automized, of course. So what to do with all these data? So next to typical figures, we counted the ratio of uncategorized to categorized transactions, a pie chart with all your expenses categories, and another chart which shows your real consumption by excluding your savings. So let's say for the moment you consume more than 70% of your income. Then the code will look at your daily life expenses. If they're also too high, the computer will find the subcategory with the highest cost and suggest you to make there some cuts as a saving measure. We also have a rate of accuracy of how good the machine categorizes transactions. All these KPIs can be used for companies' annual accounts. And what else can we get out of these data? Well, for me, it was kind of logic as a next step to build here an asset overview, since the code can get you current stock informations a function of monthly growth, growth rates for, let's say, your private pension plan or your billing savings and other accounts balances. And in the end, the computer provides you charts and tables, which can be used for discussions about interest with your banker for, let's say, when you're about to buy a house or a condo. Okay, now it's time for Streamlit. Let's move over to there. Okay, there you go. And here you see all the, um, the, the charts of bars and pies, which I just talked about. Um, here's also your asset overview. And then you get also your financial evaluation on monthly based, 
but also uh, on your last quarter. And in the end, you find a portfolio recommender, um, which calculates the highest return on investment based on past numbers and your current stock allocation. So let's just move up. There's the interactive part where you can um, define the funder. Let's just click everything out and start from scratch. So let's pretend we are Max Mustermann and we go to the daily life and then we pick here what have we spent on movies, on share mobility, on smartphones, and also for food delivery. Well, I expect there are high numbers since Corona um, made us very cozy on the weekends. Okay, so there you see it. Um, we have there four specific bars of each subcategory. And if you go with your mouse over it, you see there's some details on it as well. So some might say, oh, I thought I quit the subscription, but apparently I did not. Won't happen again, not on my watch, if you use these codes. And that is, that's it. <laughs> um, thank you very much for your time.